Good afternoon and welcome to the latest of the webinars from the AMRC here in Sheffield. My name is Alan Lyons. I am the SME Small Medium Enterprise Business Network Manager. And you're very welcome and it's good to see that so many people have uh, registered to, to, to watch the, the, the webinar. Um, we've got a great lineup of uh, presenters today. I will introduce you to them uh, later on in a few moments. Um, we'd like to thank everybody for helping us put this webinar together, in particular the three companies and the, the back staff at the AMRC. As you will know, the purpose of this webinar um, is simply to showcase the great work that we can do with smaller companies across the region and across the UK. That is not just for the global blue chip companies, but very importantly for smaller companies, companies like yourselves. This webinar has been recorded, just to let you know, and other webinars will follow in the coming weeks and months. Uh, you'll be notified about those accordingly as we have your, your contact details. So I now like to give you a brief overview of uh, the AMRC, and I'll take you through a number of slides. Again, as it says, my name is Alan Lyons. I'm the SME Business Network Manager, and I've been at AMRC for about three years. Pleased to say that our three presenters today are Richard Prudo from Fiberline Limited, Warren Turner from Anchor Magnets, and Tim Jewett from Clifford Sheffield. So, the AMRC, what are we about? So, we were established back in 2001, almost 20 years ago, a collaboration between Boeing and the University of Sheffield. We have over 700 staff across a number of sites, approximately 120 uh, companies. So we are members from global giants to local SMEs, over £300 million investment in state-of-the-art capabilities, and part of the Rolls-Royce Boeing Global Research Networks. So, where did we come from? This was the advanced manufacturing part back in 1999, prior to the demolition, and you'll see the road leading through to, to Hanswell. So, as I say, we've come a long way in 20 years with great support from local businesses, global businesses, academia, and government. There is outlined the, the main vast manufacturing park with many of the buildings. And um, you'll see on the bottom left, we have the Thrima Center, where we've put through apprentices. Uh, very, very popular, put through about 1,000, 1,500 apprentices so far. On the other side, you'll see McLaren are on there, separate entity to the AMRC and the various buildings, each building with its own area of, of expertise. Across on the other side of the parkway, of course, is the Sheffield Business Park. That is the old uh, runway, the old airport, Sheffield Airport runway. You see Factory 2050 with the robotics and automation. The Boeing building that was opened two, two years ago at the back of the site. That is Boeing's first uh, European manufacturing site ever, and Namtec at the back as well. Further, advances um, across the UK. We've got an AMRC over in Wales and one over in the northwest over Preston Way. That the steelwork is now up on the building in the northwest. That's going to be a fantastic further asset to the AMRC family. So, some of our areas of expertise, as you may or may not know, uh, you can read them for yourself, but we've certainly got machining, metrology, composites, casting, design and prototyping, automation. And as I say, as we work with companies individually and as a group, and work with global companies right down to smaller family-owned businesses and entrepreneurs. We work to relevant industry standards and are accredited with our partners to, to trust us on the efforts of the work. So we bridge um, the valley of death, if you like. You'll see the innovation gap there where the AMRC sits. We sit between four, between three and seven. So we're in the middle of four, five, six. Companies come to us with individual challenges and um, ask that they'd like us to, to work with them on. We work with them and help provide them with the solution to overcome their engineering manufacturing problem and let them then take it from there, let them take it to market and, and commercialize it. Going with Kevin's statement um, last year and the year before. Small businesses are a vital uh, part of this, and I believe we can do more to support them. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. That's something that we believe in very, very strongly across the AMRC. And as each month 
inquiry goes on, we are giving extra uh, support to, um, to SMEs, companies like yourselves, who are in the supply chain of keeping the UK economy moving right. So what I'd like to do next is my colleague Val uh, is going to play us a video of uh, some of the work that we've done across the, the, uh, the AMRC. Val, it's over to you. Play the video. Great. So I think that's giving you a very good flavour as to what, who we are and what we're about. Um, it's now going to give me great pleasure to, you've got my contact details. There we go. You've got my contact details there for further contact. And um, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Richard Prudhoe from Fiberline Limited. Good afternoon, Richard. How are you? Yeah, good afternoon, Alan. Thanks very much for that brief introduction and for telling us a bit about the AMRC. Hopefully, you can now see my presentation. Um, it was interesting watching that actually because it was all metal and engineering, heavy engineering that we were looking at in those videos. Uh, we're a bit different. Um, briefly, I'd like to explain a little about who Fiberline are uh, and I'll give you a bit of introduction to the background to the project, what we'd done ourselves and, and why we ended up approaching the AMRC. The process of working with the AMLC and, and summarise finally the, the outcomes that we had from the collaboration. Briefly, we are a family owned and run business. Uh, as I say, we're not, we're not people handling metal. We are a bit different. We operate in the upholstery industry and we're suppliers of fillings to the furniture manufacturers. So we supply the cushion fillings that go into three piece suites. We supply the fillings for about 4,000 sofas a week, uh, but it is actually a very bespoke business because everything that we do is particular to a particular model of furniture to a particular customer. We work on just-in-time deliveries, very short lead times, about a week, and we are a high volume, low margin business. Very labor intensive because of the bespoke nature of it, and we employ about 200 employees. We have over the years invested in sort of standard CNC and automation processes that were commercially available and appropriate for our industry. And they tended to be revolving around the cutting of fabric and, and foam. But having sort of exhausted those processes and obvious processes of automation, we were looking for ways to continue our drive to remove labor um, from our process. Uh, and we identified two processes that we wanted to see if we could uh, improve. 
and they were labour intensive processes that there were commercial solutions to in terms of automation but they were very much committed to large volumes of the same product uh, and we just weren't like that we have very small batch runs and we needed to find a solution to enable us to do small batches of a huge variety literally tens of thousands of live products at any one time in our in our in our business so we have a drilling process where we're simply drilling holes in pieces of foam and we have a foam gluing process where we are spraying uh, adhesive glue to bits of foam or product to, to then glue them together and make an assembly uh, and both of these product processes we felt were potential for the introduction of robotics and we ran an in-house project uh, to oops what's up on there? an in-house project to introduce some robotics into it and we did that successfully internally ourselves and, and we used a very low cost or well, relatively low cost universal robot to prove the theory that we could use a robot to drill holes and and spray glue and that process worked but the problem for both of them was that we needed an operator to train the robot where to drill the holes uh, and and where to spray the glue and ultimately that meant we'd be spending more on robot programming than we we're potentially going to save in terms of removing the labor from from doing the actual operation itself so we were looking for solutions to effectively improve the generation of the program uh, and, and automate that those two processes without us having to use a, uh, a robot programmer and the other problem with these both of these operations was that it required the parts to be put in a fixed position for us to then operate the robot so it needed a fixed datum point every time for the parts to be located in before the robot came into operation so again internally before the in involvement of the amrc we <coughs> did find a solution for the automation of the drilling programs we found some software that we could upload the programs to and it automatically generated the cutting uh, the drilling program um but it still had the problem of requiring the part to be put in a fixed fixed location and if the part wasn't in the right location the drilling program just drilled the holes in the wrong place but we were happy with that and, and we decided that that was good enough to put into production which is what we did and it did improve the quality and improve the productivity um, but we still felt there was work to be done in trying to improve our um, or remove the need for the fixed data point on the gluing side <clears throat> we we took it another step and, and changed the process slightly to see if we could help us introduce some robotics which was a an assembly line process um, but again we still hit the hurdle of we couldn't work out how to automatically generate a spraying program and we still had the problem of a fixed datum point required for the part to be in the right location if we did put a robot into that situation so those were the two sort of processes that we wanted um, to try and improve um, both had similar problems in that they they had a fixed date and point requirement which we wanted to remove um, and we wanted on the drilling side for the date and point to be removed and the and the vision system potentially to verify the operator had selected the right program for the right part that was on the table and similarly on the gluing side we wanted to see if the vision system could be used to automatically generate the, the, the spraying program and also remove the need for a fixed datum point. And again, also verify that the operator had selected the correct program for the part on the table. Now, now the use of vision, we, we'd done the, what we could using a, a universal robot. The use of vision took us totally into a different area and something that we weren't, weren't familiar with. Uh, and that's why we actually then approached the AMRC uh, we had a, we were a bit skeptical to be honest because we felt that very much there were sort of people revolved around dealing with metal um, but we did approach them and they were receptive to our initial approach so we went to see them uh, we had an ex a meeting and explained effectively what I've just been through in those previous slides 
uh, and we explained that we were now sort of well beyond our our skill set and we needed some boffins really to to help us um, solve these problems that we had identified uh, interestingly enough the armrc thought we were a challenge because we were different products we were you know, our products were flexible they were soft uh, we were talking about tolerances of plus or minus five millimeters uh, and that certainly wasn't something that they were used to um, the tolerances actually at that level were almost more of a challenge to them than than the sort of nano tolerances that they are normally uh, used to to dealing with so the process then was we agreed some initial objectives on the drilling we wanted to use camera technology uh, to remove the need for a fixed datum point and we wanted that technology to then recognize the part that was put on the table for drilling confirm the item and create a new a reference point to reorientate any any program that we've got created already so it didn't need the part to be in exactly the same place and on the gluing side we wanted to see if, if what we learned on the drilling side could be applied to the gluing process and use the camera recognition outcomes to automate the generation of a spray path around the edges of the shape to, to spray the glue. So those were our agreed objectives. The way it worked with the AM, AMRC was that they <clears throat> wrote a statement of work which detailed the project and its objectives. Uh, they detailed in great depth the process that we would go through importantly for us was that it also having got that document allowed us to apply for 50 percent grant funding under access innovation through the lab so that helped us significantly with the costs of the project with the amrc and i would certainly recommend the access innovation if people are looking at this as a potential route for themselves the way it worked in, with the IMRC was we, we, we visited them on a number of occasions to see their progress. They, they obviously had some of our parts, which they, yeah, were, they had on site. They used their own um, universal robot to prove the various technology and the bits that they were doing in the background. Quite frankly, it was, it wasn't, still is beyond me how, how it works. Um, but they conducted a number of trials and, and we were, heavily involved in terms of guiding and seeing whether those trials were actually moving the project in the direction that we wanted to move it. At the end of the process, we ended up with effectively two documents. Uh, on the drilling side, we ended up with a full specification for a, a drilling cell. Uh, and that document details how the process would work, the software that was required, and the, and the hardware that was required. So that was something that we could then simply take to a, an, a, a, an integrator and get them to effectively install that specification to achieve what we wanted to achieve. On the gluing side, we got a slightly different document. We got a trade study and a proposed layout. Um, again, this was something that had never been done before. Uh, they did prove that certain elements of the project were feasible using the, the camera technology um, but because there were certain areas that weren't totally bottomed it was more of a proposed trade study that needed further work if we wanted to go down that route but it was a document that we used to make some further decisions so the outcomes and actions on the drilling side we were able to use the camera technology mounted above the part the camera recognized the part it confirmed that we'd selected the right program it reorientated re the program to make sure it was exactly how the part was loaded on the table and therefore it removed the need for the datum points and as a result we we did go ahead with an installation on the gluing side they did approve they did, they did prove the technology could work it did use it to recognize the part they could generate a a glue program a path for the robot to follow um, they did remove the need for a date and point but it also identified a couple of other issues uh, going through this process that it couldn't solve which was principally the varying heights of the products so we actually used their results on that occasion to discount that technology uh, and then go and look for another another solution 
So very briefly, where are we now? Uh, we now have a drilling cell in operation. Um, a slight aside, I would just mention that if any of you are thinking of using degree apprenticeships, then this is an ideal project to get a young man involved, or young woman indeed, involved in because uh, it is something that they feel very comfortable with in this sort of technology. So this gentleman here was actually in, involved in the installation of this process. But effectively, the camera now is taking the picture of the shapes that have been loaded on the table. There is no setup requirement from one product to another. The camera recognizes the shape. It confirms the location. It confirms the program that it needs to use to drill the holes. And therefore, we can move from one product very quickly to another without any need to change anything else in terms of the parts location or, or, or the setup of the tooling. On the gluing side, we used the results of the uh, ARMRC uh, project to, as I say, discount the initial thought processes. Uh, and we looked for a commercial um, solution, totally outside our industry, but having had the reassurance that we knew, now knew what we wanted it to do, we were much more able to go to a supplier of equipment that supplied the painting industry actually uh, and confirm with them and with ourselves that their process could do what we needed it to do so there is no programming of any shapes going down this line <clears throat> that is all done by three-dimensional scanning um, and the AMSC project helped us make the right decision on this occasion so briefly in conclusion um, the AMRC, AMRC brought a skill set that we simply didn't have. Ca camera technology, we'd pushed our limits in terms of doing the universal robots. Uh, camera technology certainly so wasn't something that we had any experience of. Um, and they, they massively brought something to the party that we would never otherwise have been able to achieve. They proved the theory for one process. The drilling was correct. Uh, and we were able and reassured to go ahead with the investment that was required um to put that installation in um, they proved the theory that we were considering for the gluing was not quite correct so it de-risked de that project it saved us wasting money on something and going off in the wrong direction um, the process that we went through helped us identify what we really needed and, and helped us find and, and identify a commercially available alternative uh, and both projects because they are something that no one else in our industry has ever done um, has given us a competitive advantage in the marketplace on the drilling side we have now become the supplier of first choice for that type of product because of the consistency of the product the quality of the product and our capacity to do a large range and volume of product and on the glue spraying the fabrication it's de-skilled the process it's improved our increased our capacity and improved our productivity so you know we were pleased with with the results massively and that's it excellent richard that's perfect thank you very much um, and yeah. i think i joined the amrc just as the you were working with with, with colleagues um, and it's great to see the full picture the whole picture uh, particularly from from your side uh, and it sounds as very much as though um, you had skills in house, but you just needed that the, the solution and further skills enhancing with colleagues from across the AMRC. Um, and I know that uh, colleagues very much did enjoy working with Fiberline. As you say, it was different. It was away from the normal of, of the TNM, yeah. Uh, and and it's great to see the, the results that um, those those results at the end that has increased. You know, um, they scaled. Uh, areas for you that you can use colleagues to do on other processes, but also I guess that it has improved your your turnover in some way and and, and production lead times as well. Yes, no, no, definitely. And and I think it was like putting the you know the cream on the on the top of the cake, if you like, using the AMRC. We we had got so far with both projects. On the on the gluing one, it would have probably stopped because we just were we didn't know how to finish it off. On the drilling one, we had got to a good point. But we knew we could do better or, or better could be done should i say but we just didn't have the skill set to get there and, and you know family-run business we neither did we have the confidence to say well, we're going to go away and, and hire somebody just to do this project that wouldn't have been viable so um 
yeah, the, the, the involvement of AMRC really did finish the pro both projects off in a very, very positive, very positive Excellent. manner. Brilliant. Good. Okay. Again, Richard, appreciate you taking part. We will come back to you at the end for, for any questions and answers. But for now, Richard, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. So um, very pleased now to introduce our next presenter. It's um, Warren from uh, Warren Turner from Anchor Magnets. Let me just get uh, my colleagues or Warren to switch his camera on if he hasn't already. And then I shall disappear. Can be there now, Alan. Okay. I can hear you, but I can't see you. What do we like for vision? Well, there you go. Brilliant. Okay. Well, um, yours was an interesting uh, uh, project as well, and colleagues were delighted to work with you. So I'm going to disappear now, and I will come back to you as you approach your end. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Alan, and for allowing us this opportunity to share our experience of working with the AMLC. So welcome, everybody. I'd just like to start by explaining a little bit about Anchor Magnets and what we do. Then I'll move on to how the project came about and finally the project, the outcome and the learning from the process. So Anchor Magnets, we've always been in Sheffield manufacturing, very proud of our heritage there. We've been around for almost 40 years. Uh, more recently, we've just opened a, a distribution operation in Germany. We're very proud that we design and make manufacture materials. So they're mainly flexible magnetic materials that we're supplying to printers, retailers, industry. We also do permanent magnetic materials such as ferrites, neos, assembly. So we manufacture, convert, and also do box in, box out. As far as I'm aware, we're still the UK's only manufacturer of flexible magnetic material. And as mentioned, uh, we've just recently opened uh, an operation in Germany. So how did the project come about? Alan has uh, for a long time run a networking event in Sheffield and I was introduced to the SME project manager and quite quickly it became apparent they had a, a passion and expertise for helping SMEs. That resulted uh, in a follow-up meeting uh, following from which we then scoped out a project. Not dissimilar to Richard, we have uh, quite a lot of manual labour involved in processing our materials. So we do lots of cutting, sheeting and packing. And we were looking at utilising cost effective automation technology. This is something that we had uh, no experience in within our workforce. So very, very useful to get the AMRC involved. Things we were looking for increase productivity, make us more competitive in the marketplace, high throughput and improve lead times. Both of those are important to us. Probably 50% of our order book is scheduled to ship within a week, 75% within two weeks. We have orders coming in that need to be shipped within 24 hours. Some of the challenges, uh, our material is unusual to work with in that it's very problematic. All it wants to do is stick together magnetically, it gives us problems when we're cutting, separating, packing. We have a very wide range of products, so 150 plus extrusion profiles. We have rolls of magnetic sheets, over 100 variants of those, plus any of these can be laminated with 20 plus adhesives or vinyls. It's bespoke manufacturing, so very rarely will we get the same order twice. So we will produce in things in a range of sizes, ranging from sheets of flexible magnetic material that are three meters by meter down to pieces that might be 20 to 30 millimeters, either die cut, kiss cut. And one of our biggest challenges is unique client packing requirements. So you might want them bagged in tens, bulk packed, uh, specific labels so we, we never know what kind of order is going to come across until, until it actually lands and as you can see this this is a sample of uh, some of our magnetic extrusion as it comes off our high-speed cutters so it comes out on the left and on the right is how our client will uh, possibly want that packing and sending to them uh, the process the process was probably as straightforward as uh, as you could ever think. 
So uh, firstly, we completed the application and funding. And in our case, I'm really pleased to say that it was fully funded. Uh, Matt and the AMRC team did a full site visit, which was absolutely essential to the process because we've got very little uh, understanding of automation. What, what we have done over the 40 years is built in-house a lot of our machinery and although we're in touch with modern processes, automation and robotics was something that we'd, we'd never considered before. So we completed the application and funding, as I say, that was uh, in our case fully funded, which was extremely useful. The, the team were highly experienced in uh, manufacturing and in the technology that they were looking to apply, so they were quickly able to understand the requirements and agree the project scope. Because of the nature of our production with the variability in, uh, in product, they were easily able to assess the feasibility and ruled out quite a lot of our processes. We ended up selecting two work streams. One was for repetitive uh, packing, and that was planned to be a robotic pick and stack. And what AMRC helpfully did was put us in touch with a third party automation company for a second work stream. This was on quite a big uh, part of our production capacity, and that would have been laminated adhesives to uh, a variety of our extrusion products. The trial, again, could, couldn't really have been any simpler as far as we were concerned. Uh, we supplied the agreed product to AMRC for testing, and in this case, this was the uh, small packs of extrusion that we supplied to uh, some of our clients. AMRC coordinated the full trial at their premises, and what that included doing, they sourced and procured the robot, did all the programming, and run all the trials at AMRC, we were able to go and visit and see the robot in operation and there's a, an image in the bottom right hand corner there showing it in operation. And, and at this stage it was just a, a theoretical test just to prove whether it, it was feasible before we took it to stage further. So if, evaluate the viability and the performance. So the outcome, the for the project stream one, the robotic pick and stack, given the nature of our materials uh, and the fact that we were looking at only one or two particular jobs within our organisation, it was necessary for us to look at the lower end of the cost, necessary to achieve the cost benefit. And this is because although it was a regular order, there was no guarantee that this uh, work would continue into the future. There were some challenges with the robot at this lower end in that the positional accuracy was insufficient. The material unsurprisingly caused challenges with dropping and stacking. Uh, the magnetic energy and the poles were causing the material to jump about, which is something that we do experience when we're stacking manually. There was an element of pre-stacking required by the operatives, which uh, made the process less efficient than we'd hoped it would be. There were also some programming hurdles, and one of the challenges that we have is that we didn't have any in-house experience. So similar to Richard, that would have probably involved us having to go out to market and uh, employ somebody with the relevant experience. The speed at which the robot needed to operate in, in order to be able to stack accurately, it was only running at 25% for the stacking and 5% for the picking. What AMRC did was very helpfully provide us with a, a comprehensive review and report. And in AMRC's opinion, it was deemed not suitable for the application. What was highlighted that a high specification kit would meet the requirements. However, this wouldn't meet the cost benefit threshold. And one of the other challenges we have is the constantly changing nature of the products that we supply. Project Stream 2, uh, and this was equally important to us, this was semi auto lamination of the adhesives to magnetic extrusion. And this was from the contacts uh, we were given through AMRC. This was a much higher capital investment, and although it was technically possible, 
to do what we wanted it to do, it was unproven. So there were some risks involved there. It would have involved a large capital investment and there was a very long payback, so five to eight years. Although we've produced these products consistently for the last five years, uh, our product range is changing constantly, so there would have been some risk in doing that. And still, with this process, there was significant user input required, and that would have limited any savings and extending the payback period. So although neither project in the end uh, came to fruition and was taken further, there, there was a significant amount of learning that was invaluable to us. So what it did for us was provide some validation. And whilst we were sat here thinking that surely there's something we can do to make us more efficient, uh, manual processes, everyone's saying these are thing of the past. However, in, in our case, it was proven that our current methods were cost effective. Now we could, we could have employed automation, but we'd have had to have commit to a significant capital investment and there were significant risks around that. One of the uh, benefits of investigating this technology is that we were introduced to vision technology. So interested to hear that uh, Richard's managed to implement that. So Matt, catch up with you later on that one, Richard. Uh, we are now looking to deploy vision technology because one of the things we do, we apply uh, a UV coating to some of our magnetic products. And we've proven that the vision technology can spot defects or imperfections in the coating. So we're looking to incorporate into that into our process in the near future. As the cost of technology reduces and technological advances continue, it's something we agreed with AMRC we will revisit in the near future. We think whilst it wasn't suitable for us at the time, we're pretty sure that it will be at some point in the future. It sent us down paths that we'd never considered because we hadn't had that much exposure to this kind of technology. That's always useful. So now we've got members of our team reviewing what's available, what's on the market and what can be used. Another byproduct is it forced us to review our current processes. So we've actually made efficiency gains and identified potential upgrades to our current plant and equipment. And finally, for us, it, it was a risk free opportunity to evaluate cutting edge technology. And this was done in conjunction with people who are very passionate, very experienced, and in our case, weren't frightened to say, I'm sorry at this time, it, it's not right for you. So all in all, it was a very worthwhile experience, although we didn't necessarily achieve the outcome that, that we were hoping for at the outset of the project. Well, thank you very much indeed. Again, uh, as per Richards, that was, was very interesting. And it's interesting that, um, you know, the, as you say, perhaps at this stage you didn't implement uh, the, the solution that the, my, my colleagues came up with, but it proved out whether it could be done, whether it couldn't be done, and what paths you, you should take further. And it's, I think, sometimes you are you are as well known the full extent of, of the of the situation as opposed to uh, not doing it at all, if you like, yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I think it's, it's very encouraging that you are perhaps considering going down that, that path with us again in, in the near future. And again, perhaps meeting up with uh, with Richard at Fiberline and, and seeing how he has implemented things on, on his side. I think it's inevitable at some point that we will adopt this technology. We, we sat here looking at this thinking how many people we need to pack our materials and surely there's, there's got to be a better way of doing it. And there is, yeah. but at the moment, the, the capital investment is too great and the variability of our product range probably too broad. But um, it, it assisted us, the, the vision technology was a, a big game for us and we probably wouldn't have been exposed to that had we not entered into this uh, project and partnership. So very, very useful. Excellent, good. Good, and it's, it's wonderful what can be achieved through networking as well. And I think I, I'm delighted that you had some understandable cynicism in the beginning of the AMRC, but that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, working with colleagues that uh, that we overcame that. So that's that, that's fantastic. Warren, for now, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I appreciate uh, your presentation. Thank okay, you. So now, thank, thank you. Now, before I uh, introduce our final speaker, uh, Tim Jewett from Footprint Sheffield, I'd just like to remind um, our audience um, that you are able to ask questions down the right hand side of your screen. Please do feel free to type your questions in there and we can pick those up 
at the end of, of Richard uh, of Tim's uh, presentation. Again, the question box is on the right hand side. Okay, so um, Tim, if, if uh, we're ready to upload yours, then um, we're all good. Right. Can you hear me, Alan? I can hear you. I can see you. So, um, uh, Tim, it, it's, it's fantastic to, to have you and, and Footprint taking part in, in, in this as well, a long established, fantastic Sheffield manufacturing business. Um, over to you, and I'll come back to you in, in, in 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. Excellent. Just want to check you can see my presentation, can't you? Yes, we can. Excellent. Right. It's perfect. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Tim Jewett, one of the directors of Footprint Tools. Um, on to the first slide. Uh, Footprint Tools, or Footprint Sheffield Limited is our legal name. Uh, we're a British hand tool manufacturer, so hand tools as in hammers, chisels, wrenches. Um, pretty old school, we date back to the 18th century. Uh, we're a traditional Sheffield metal basher. 80% uh, of our product range still made in Britain. We specialities, our specialities are closed eye drop forging, heat treatment, grinding, and linishing. Uh, they're the main processes that we carry out on site, as well as lots of other processes. Um, we are an SME at the probably the micro end, 13 staff in total. And our factory is not the usual sort of factory that you'd associate with the AMRC. Uh, I don't know about any of you, if you've been up to the AMRC, it's a great place, great uh, flagship uh, venue uh, for the UK and manufacturing. Um, but I know certainly in our factory, we can't eat dinner off the floor of our factory. Whereas in the AMRC, you can. Um, one of our oldest machines actually dates back to Victorian times and runs on fan belts. We still use it to make cutting tools that we use for our wrenches. Um, so we're not your usual AMRC type company, um, or you know, we're not a Boeing, we're not a Rolls Royce, we're not an advanced manufacturer, we're just a British manufacturer that still does dirty old processes. Um, right, the project that we did with the AMRC actually kicked off first of all in 2015. Uh, when we identified we had a problem with our number one selling product, uh, it's called a line pin. And this is what bricklayers knock into either end of a wall and tie a line into uh, to make sure they lay their bricks straight and true. We are the brand leader in the UK and Australia for this product. Uh, and we sell probably every year 100 to 150,000 of these individual line pins a year. Um, now, the dilemma was that it was high value sorry high volume low margin and the margins were slowly getting eaten away as retailers keep on chipping away and costs kept on going up there was a large large human component uh, into the production uh, so we had to forge the items we had to cut the fash off from the forging process we had to grind an edge on linish a uh, form of polishing uh, on grinding belts as well each each individual line pin and then harden them and then we sent them out for plating um, now, we didn't know of any machine on the market that we knew could replicate the full production of line pins. Um, so we had to look at alternatives. What could, what were the options available to us? Uh, we could source a copy of the product from the Far East as all of our competitors do, um, but we lose the USP of Made in Britain, Made in Sheffield, uh, which is a big USP in our market, and we'd lose quality control. Yes, you can still monitor quality from afar, but we weren't comfortable with that. We're a bit long in the tooth. We had no experience or knowledge of robots, before we went into this project. Um, now, we know there are machines that are probably all singing, all dancing, that may be able to do a lot of this work, um, but they charge a pretty penny for that in the hundreds of thousands of pounds with no guarantee of success. And you're probably tied into a maintenance contract to have an engineer fly over from Germany or somewhere else in the world uh, to come and check it every year. Um, so our dilemma was basically, where do we start? So back in 2015, we started discussing this and it's been a long journey. Uh, and it was finally completed in January 2019, so it was a slow burn for us, but possibly one of the best projects we've done as a business and one of the best investments we've made as a business. Um, it's a four-stage journey as far as we see it. Just going to move the screen here. It was basically discovery phase, the de-risking stage, the integration stage, and then the actual it's deliverable, delivering stage stage sorry I can't see my screen at the moment um, the discovery stage involved the AMRC but later on in our process when we first identified the problem in 2015 um, my brother and I were the directors we spent a lot of time on Google and YouTube searching for robots that grind robots that can harden robots that can forge uh, and even to this day I'm still getting adverts from robot companies on my YouTube uh, channel uh, YouTube subscription we didn't know where to start Literally, we were 
looking for a needle in a haystack. We didn't know where to go. And one of the things we found is a lot of companies don't actually publicize the work they've done. A lot of our competition wouldn't tell us if they were using robots in the processes we were looking at. Um, it was only when we spoke to the AMRC uh, and it was a phone call initially saying, look, we've got a problem and we don't know where to look. You guys have got experience. Can you just give us a bit of advice? Just tell us where we need to look. And they said, well, why don't we send two blokes out to see you? So they came to the factory and we went through the processes. And that's when it really started to come together. The AMRC advised us about the processes that they think are doable and where there weren't too many issues with the tolerances being too wide for a robot to be able to cope with. And that's when we moved into the de-risk stage. The AMRC gave us the idea that actually certain processes were doable. And that's when they moved into the de-risk and we commissioned them to do some work for us to de-risk the project. I think Alan called it the valley of death earlier. We call it just de-risking. We weren't 100% sure if it would work. The MRC wasn't 100% sure if it worked, but they were reasonably confident. So we thought we've got to do this because we've either got to source from abroad or continue to make them like we always have done. And it wasn't going to work if we continued that way. So the MRC started a project. Just move on to the next slide, if it will allow me. There, right. So discovery, de-risk. Um, the MRC, once they'd seen the project, they'd been into the factory, spoken about it with us. Um, they said we could focus on three areas of the production process. Uh, and Blair, I've got uh, pictures of these three areas. So first of all is once we've forged and taken the scrap off the uh, the forging, we have to grind an edge. Now that's a staff member over a uh, over a belt. And if we're doing potentially two, three thousand of these a day sometimes, it's a pretty it's it's a boring job. It's not fun, and you're not going to get many young people into this sort of industry anymore. He then passes it on to the person next to him who will then polish it. So linish it is what we call it. And again, someone sat there for a day, day after day doing line pins. It's pretty monotonous. And then after we've edged and polished the products, we have to harden it. Now, the AMRC said to us that, well, look, we think a robot can edge, polish and harden this and do it all in one process, removing the need for three blokes to actually do this process and take it down to one just to man the machine, feed it and empty it. And it actually made sense. Forging would have been difficult because there's too many variables in that process. There are forging robots out there, but it would have been too expensive for us to do for such a low value item. So actually, it made perfect sense what they were saying, and it was all one movement. We could integrate it into one cell. So they went away and started coming up with the project plan and started on the project. So there you saw the robot, not our robot, but one of the AMRC's robots, actually grinding an edge onto each side of the product and then polishing. Now, there was a mistake in the program there. Now, the beauty of what we managed to do is we didn't have to give them that much apart from time, invite them into the factory, see the processes, and then they could take it away. We gave them one of our linishing belts, uh, which you see there. We gave them plenty of samples. There was very limited capital that we needed to give them. They just had all the kit, most of the kit there, and they could just get on with it, which made it great for us and less intensive for us as well. We invited the MRC staff members to work on the project into the factory to spend a day with us and actually sit down and have a go at doing the line pins, understand the movements involved with the human hand. And um, they took videos away with them and they took lots of samples. Now, once the MRC had de-risked it, they proved the concept worked. It actually could work. They had a program. From there, it was actually fairly straightforward because it's a computer program. It can be just handed off to the inter integrator. There was for us, we didn't take a big specification document. Um, we just took the program. And the integrator was introduced to us by the AMRC, uh, A3L, who's a former AMRC uh, member of staff as well, um, Sheffield as well, which uh, made it easy. It was on site and on hand. Now, the integration side was probably the longest side. The AMRC de-risking side was probably the easy part. The integration side was the harder side because there's lots of considerations that we had to go into there. There was the cost, health and safety in terms of caging. Um, the robots that we're using don't have sensors that stop when someone gets in the way. If you get in the way of it and you're between the cage and the robot, it will crush you because it will not stop. We had to think about the feed in, how that's how the robot's going to actually pick up and accept the product from the, uh, the uh, person tending the machine. Um, the grippers, the manipulator, manipula manipulators, um, fume extraction hardening unit to integrate with the robot cell we have to obviously work on the integration of the robot telling the hardening unit when to switch on to harden the line pins we had staff training and um, the tolerances from the forgings and the power and electrics 
So this whole project for actually integrating didn't just involve the integrator A3L, it involved a lot of our members of staff time. It involved getting an electrician in um, and health and safety inspectors in to actually make sure we were fully health and safety compliant. But that's where the AMRC could give us initial advice and then handed it over to the integrator who could do a lot of this back work for this work for us, but as well as providing training. Now I must add here, it was at this stage that we sent three members of staff on an AMRC robotics course. I think it was a two day robotics course um, I must urge, if anybody's doing anything like this, integrating a new bit of machinery, robots, speak to the MRC on training as well. Um, the three blokes we sent on that course, before they went, they were unsure of robots. They, they understood what we were trying to do. They were unsure. When they came back, they could draw their name on a chalkboard using a robot, and they felt comfortable picking up the controls of the robot and fiddling with it and playing with it. And I've never seen such a rapid turnaround in terms of people's uh, opt from vague cautiousness to full-on optimism about robots it was a great thing to see and the mrc to their credit did a great robot training course there which i can't recommend enough now i've just been down to the factory earlier today and taken a picture here as to the actual robot now so this is has it been working today right and um, other impacts that this has had on the business um, i wanted to try and give you numbers so you can actually see that this has had real world impact for us and the first chart is um, all our products uh, days to dispatch. So in 2018, before we put the robot in, we had severe issues. When uh, we had blokes grinding and linishing and hardening line pins, they were only doing line pins. They weren't producing any of the products. So the aim of the robot was to free up that resource and allow them to go into other production processes. And our days to dispatch uh, on average in 2018 was uh, 13 days. In 2019, this dropped to eight, uh, well, nine, sorry. And then in 2020, it's dropped to eight, but there's other things going on here as well. And our average days overdue uh, went from six down to two uh, in 2020. That performance was significant for us, uh, and it still is significant, significant to this day. Now, the second chart is for line pins only. Um, the red line that you see is when we put the robot in, and you saw an immediate decrease in our days to dispatch and our days overdue for the product. So this is our number one selling product. We saw an immediate increase. Now, there was an increase in Q2 2019, and that's because the induction hardener that we'd been out and purchased uh, from a UK company broke down on us. Um, it was just out of its warranty as well. It broke down, and the company that actually made it uh, refused to answer phone calls from us. So we had to go back to gas hardening whilst we waited for another uh, another Sheffield company of induction heaters to make us a new induction heater that is now fitted onto the cell. And then Q4 2019 is when you see the impacts really, really kick in, where we're pretty much, very rarely are we overdue on orders, and we're delivering within five days, which is a huge operational performance, uh, but it's also affecting other products as well. Um, 2020 has been obviously an odd year for everybody. Um, we have seen, well, the first lockdown, we saw sales drop 90, 95%. However, um, come the end of the first lockdown, sales just exploded. And right now we're busier than we've ever been. Um, we can't make enough line pins quick enough. Now, I dread to think what would happen if we did not have the robot. These last Q3 2020 figures would be through the roof if we did not have the robot. We'd be looking at several months lead time. Uh, the robot has made a material difference to the performance of the business during this, what is, exceptional circumstances. Um, now, what do we do differently? Um, I think, first of all, uh, when we've looked at this, we probably actually have a member of staff go up to the AMRC and spend a couple of days with the staff there, just talking through the problems, but also getting them out the, getting out the factory, getting out the office, and just seeing the AMRC in action um, would have been a good opportunity for us. We didn't do that, unfortunately. We just said, here you go, here's the kit that you need, crack on. Um, now we overspec the robot with the intention of doing other products uh, that we actually purchased to, to make this product. Um, we probably would have got a smaller robot with hindsight, which is a great thing, um, because we've realized that the volumes mean that we can't put any other products on this. Um, now, the key learns, engage with the AMRC at the discovery uh, stage. They're only a phone call away, have a chat with them. If they can't help you, they're pretty good blokes, they will introduce you to other people that can help. Um, include your workforce, Bring your key staff along, get them training. AMRC has got some great training packages. If you're looking at robots, get them on that robot training course. It was an eye opener for our staff. Um, we also say stay involved um, and leading development all stages. 
we're a small business, but we like to be involved. Um, the only time we weren't too involved is when the AMRC were de-risking it, but they had all the information. They knew they could call us or pop into the factory if they needed to, but we still took responsibility for the project. It was our job to deliver it, no one else's. Um, we also say don't give a blank sheet of paper to anybody. Um, if you give a blank sheet of paper, you'll probably get a blank sheet of paper back. Focus in on the areas, uh, I think the other two present, pres presenters have actually said they focus in on specific areas. You may not get the results you want, but focus in on those areas and learn about that and then move on to your next project if those ones don't work. And um, speak to people. Since we put in our first robot, we've spoken to um, a US manufacturer of hammers um, at, a, well, at a bar in Germany when we were at a trade show. And turns out he's looking at exactly the same processes as us, grinding and linishing of his products because he can't get skilled people to come into that those roles anymore. And it's mind-numbingly boring for people in this industry. Um, we also spoke to a Chinese manufacturer of hammers um, that we've known for a long time. And guess what? They're not bothered about putting robots on forging. They're more bothered about putting robots into grinding and linishing of their products. And it shows that we're not the only one looking at this and we've all come to the same conclusions. Try and speak to people you trust and know. They may give you some insight that you may not have had, and it does help massively when you suddenly realize that you're not going down the a wrong, wrong way track. There's other people there doing exactly what you're doing, and if you don't compete and you're friendly with them, speak to them, share notes. It may be useful for you. Um, one of the things that we were urged massively to do when we first put our robot in was data. It's all about data, and I agree data is a big thing. However, for us, it was a big enough step just getting a robot. Um, we could have put Wi-Fi into the factory and collected lots of data, but we've always got blokes down there on the factory floor. They know what they're doing. They are skilled. They can see if there's a problem. Once One day in the future, we probably will look at collecting data, but right now it's not a priority. Our priority is to improve the productivity. We'll then look at data. So don't feel like you've got to do everything all at once. Feel that you can just do one stage at a time. Take it steady. Don't try and do all singing, all dancing data collection when you've put a new bits of machinery in. Look at just getting it done one stage at a time and don't overload your team. All of our staff are learning rapidly. We're all learning. The whole market is changing. Sales channels are changing. There's only so much information they can take on at once. So don't overload your team by saying, go and collect lots of data. You've got to know what you're doing with data before you start collecting it. Um, in summary, um, AMRC, free for a chat, whatever the industry, um, we were probably one of the early SMEs to engage with them uh, with quite an odd project at the time. Um, they were really open to speaking to us, really helpful. And I'd say if you're thinking about doing a project at the AMRC, pick up the phone and have that chat. Uh, it costs nothing for a chat and see what they say. Um, secondly, confidence. We are now looking at Robot Mark II uh, to do another process for us. If we hadn't done this first project, we wouldn't be looking at this project, which is a bit more complex, but the AMRC has proven this can work for the processes we want to put it to. Um, that confidence is key. Our staff are confident around robots now. We don't need to worry about them adopting new uh, robots because it's now part of the processes already. Upskilling staff, it's been fantastic. Um, continued digitization, we are looking at um, digitizing uh, stock, well, more digitization of stock management, integrating our stock management systems with our carriers to reduce the uh, data input time of our dispatch bay. Um, but also one of the biggest things we've seen is putting in automation along the signs of a robot has meant we can reallocate resource to higher value products. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll hand over back over to Alan. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. I think that you know, all three presentations encompasses everything that we are trying to be about at, at the AMRC. As you say, you know, uh, the tools being Footprint Tools being a, a, a traditional, you know, family-run business, successfully run business for a hundred years, uh, is uh, and that you're taking advantage of of the um, the skills and experience within the MRC that has made a difference to your business. It is improving your profitability, your lead time, and the fact that you're looking at, at moving on to to Mark Two is is fantastic. Um, I know our our team is very much. Uh, enjoyed working with you on the challenges there. Um, I do take your comment off the, the difference between your factory floor and our factory floor, um, but we haven't got the CAs yet of eating our lunch off, off the floor, but who knows what tomorrow brings. So listen, uh, to, again, thank you very much indeed for, for taking part today. I appreciate it. Um, if I could now invite our other two presenters to come back with us briefly, if possible. Maybe. 
No. Excellent. Okay. So um, I just got uh, a, a couple of questions. One question was was um, around funding. Um, yes, we are part of the, the catapult uh, centres across the UK. The funding pots, as you can imagine, does vary from, from quarter to quarter. What I would invite people to do is to get in contact with us, and I'm very happy to have that conversation over the phone and where possible face-to-face uh, -face over a coffee or first thing not over a pint. Um, my email address um, is on the website, but it is a.lyons, L-Y-U-N-S, at amrc.co.uk. So, Jens, I guess uh, the message that, that we're getting from you is that um, you're working in, in manufacturing engineering businesses of, of varying different uh, diversities, um, but I think your, your cynicism and, and thoughts and confidence about approaching the AMRC um, were, were boosted once you actually picked up the phone or came, came to see us. Is there anything further that, that you would add to that? I'd, I'd just like to say that the the experience and enthusiasm that the people that you work with at AMRC, AMRC actually want to add value to your business and see you do well, and and that's really really helpful in in the journey that you'll undertake with them. Thank you. I think just to echo that, I think yeah, the enthusiasm. Um, one thing the AMRC does have is got a relatively young team who do view the world differently to a lot of manufacturers, um, specifically you, Alan, obviously. <laughs> uh, but um, no, one thing we found is that they were able to teach a lot of our staff were they're at the older age in manufacturing. And I think um, what we benefited from is actually having your team who are who were on average younger than our average member of staff and actually their input and their view of the world was different. And that actually made a difference for us as well. Richard, anything from yourself? Okay, you can hear me now. Yeah, I, I'll just, I just—I would just uh, reiterate what Warren and, and Tim have said. Really, we, we found the AMRC guys really approachable. We, you know, it, it was an area that we just weren't sure about when we went for the first look round. I think. The colleague that I went with just looked at myself and said, "You crackers! What have we come here for? They won't—they won't want to know what we're doing. We're in the furniture industry." Um, but they were just the opposite. So, um, you know, at times they could bamboozle us, but as long as we kept them on track as to what we wanted to achieve, um, no, they were very approachable, and, and we were very pleased with the way that, that they. they talk to people who hadn't got a clue what they were talking about, quite frankly, a lot, a lot of the time. Fantastic. Brilliant. Excellent. And, and that's exactly what it's about. I mean, you all talked about innovation and collaboration. That, that's, that is where, where we are at. This is a partnership between uh, ourselves, University of Sheffield, the MRC, and businesses like yourselves. We learn from you and you learn from us. So again, um, I appreciate you approaching us in the first instance. I'd like to thank you individually, Tim, Richard, and Warren, for taking time out of busy schedule at difficult times at the moment of taking part and supporting us and spreading the message and encouraging others to join us. And that's exactly what I would like to do, to throw that challenge down to the smaller companies out there. Pick up the phone, email us, get in contact with us. Uh, we're more than happy to, to talk with you. We are very much open for business and keen and eager uh, to work with you. My thanks again, guys. My thanks also goes to colleagues across the AMRC who have been working with you and other companies and they are the, the unsung heroes behind the scenes if you like. And last but not least I think uh, colleagues who have uh, managed to support us in putting this uh, together today and keeping the, the waves going around on the webinar. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.